Sure. That means he's playing hide and seek with the Muslims. He's, he doesn't want to have a dialogue. What he, they actually mean when the Christians, they talk about dialogue of this nature is, they're telling their own people, go and convert the Muslims. They're already prepared to receive the message. They already believe in Jesus. As one of the mightiest messengers of God, they accept him as the Messiah. They believe in his miraculous birth, which many modern day Christians don't believe today. They believe in his uh, many miracles. They believe that he's coming back. He's gone up to heaven, he's coming back. What more does he need? He only needs a gentle push. Just push him over, man. Make him to accept that Christ died for his sin. That is all. That is what they're talking about. But if they use the word convert, the Muslim is going to react. When he comes along with his dog collar, When the Muslim comes along with, I mean, with the missionary comes with his dog collar, you know, the Muslim is on guard. He says, this guy's come to steal our children. So they talk about dialogue. They don't mean dialogue. But there are other Americans, like Josh McDowell, we had a dialogue with him. We had Professor Simpkins from Johnson Bible College, we had a dialogue with him. We had Dr. Um, Dr. Uh, here in uh, uh, Robert uh, Douglas. You know, we had a dialogue with him, Jimmy Swagger, dialogue with him, and all together, Father Gabriel Duffy of the Roman Catholic Church, head of, in, uh, head of the Roman Catholic Church in interchurch relations, seven Americans. I had dialogues with seven. In other words, we are talking, we are talking, and the benefit is that the people will understand each other's points of views. We want to know what the Christian, how his mind is working, and we want the Christian to know how the Muslim mind is working. And if we can go away with that understanding, he said, I can see what makes the Muslim to talk the way he's talking. You become more tolerant. You know what has programmed me, what is motivating me, and I can see what is motivating you. There is tolerance. These meetings create tolerance in their understanding. If you have understanding, tolerance. No understanding, intolerance. So the dialogues, sir, have been taking place. You might call it debate, call it dialogue, call it discourse, call it what you like, but an exchange of view, when it takes place, I feel it benefits the people. And it has been benefiting my people, anyhow. Yes. Uh, one, one second. That lady has. Let's give her a chance. Yes, madam. Thank you. Just to comment, I don't think this is a question to you, but I just. I'm taking religious studies courses right now, so I can understand the different faiths, because for a very long time, I've just had so many questions about, you know, everybody says that their religion's right, and everybody else's is wrong. I spent some time on the Navajo Indian Reservation in Arizona, and they, what I consider to have fantastic religion, they vary into nature. But you see all the Christians and everybody else who only believes in one God is running around saying these people are wrong. Why are they wrong? That's, I mean, we don't know that. We're not going to know until we're dead. And so how can people run around saying that you're totally wrong? And they're living the best life that they can. And they're doing what they consider right. The Muslim is not that intolerant. You see, the, what the Muslim says is this. Each one will be judged according to his or her opportunity and the background. God will not judge you and me on the same level. Everybody according to his light and knowledge. For example, to the Red Indians in the reservations. Whatever their concept, what opportunities did they have? There are millions in the world today who never heard the word Jesus. <laughs> you know that. But the Christians say they'll all go to hell. This is what the Christians say. They never heard the word Jesus. There are millions who never heard the name Muhammad. They never heard the word Allah. The Muslim doesn't say he'll go to hell. That's the difference now. What the Muslim says is that each and every one will be judged according to his capacity, his understanding, his background. Did he have the opportunity of receiving the message? So he had. Could he see? He saw. Like vivid flashes of light, truth, he saw. And yet he rejected it. Why? For certain material reasons. What will people say? Now you join the Arabs now. You join the Iranians now. Is that your consideration? Or is it truth? So you will be judged, I will be judged. See? Jesus Christ, you say he is a God and he died for your sins. Now he says, now I reject the idea. Why do I reject it? What is the reason? Is it prejudice? I said, no, if I become a Christian, you know, my people will look down upon me. You know, my wife might divorce me. Is that the reason? So I'm doomed. So we are charitable in Islam. Maybe you never heard the name Muhammad. There are people, Christian priests. I had a few visiting, going through South Africa, Durban, Japanese, you know, priests. 
with those dog collars on that I know is Christian, he's not a Shinto or a Buddhist. They were passing through Durban and somehow seeing that they were Japanese, I wanted to know where you come from. They said something like Brazil or Argentina, they were going from there back to home. So I asked them if they know anything about Islam. Said, never heard the word. They never heard the word Islam. I said, you know Islam? Mm -hmm. It's like Greek. I said, I know what you're talking about. I said, heard the name Muhammad? Never heard it. Quran? Never heard it. I said, now God can't be that unjust to him. He said, look, you, you heard about my message Muhammad and you didn't receive it? Go to hell. No, God, God can't do that. They never heard the term. They never, so they will be judged on a different level. You know, Jimmy Swaggart puts it so beautifully, Swaggart, beautifully. He says, you see, the closer you are, you are to the light, we can see more flaws. Huh? You are away from the light, so many of your shortcomings are covered up. Closer to the light of truth, in other words. You see, if you are, you are being everything, every little blemish is shown. So, if you had access to the light, then your responsibilities are getting <laughs> greater. You're listening to the man, and he said, look, this thing makes sense. It makes sense. How can somebody die for your sins? For example, you have a headache and I take the pill. You have AIDS and I take the injections. I said, does it make sense? He said, no. It's the most nonsensical idea. That Adam and Eve, they sin, for which they're thrown out of the garden. I'm asking, is that not punishment enough? Is, not that, is that not enough punishment? You throw the man and his woman out of the garden for having disobeyed. No, it's not enough, says the Christian, that God now curses them. That from now on, you man, you must sweat for your bread, and the woman must bear children in pain and suffering, labor. Is that not punishment enough? No, says the Christian. At the beginning of 1986, we were 4.8 billion on earth, human beings. And the Christian says, everybody goes to hell. Why? Because of the original sin. What Adam and Eve did. I am asking, did Eve ask you before eating the apple? He says, no. I said, did Adam ask you before eating the apple? You say, no. Then I said, how can God hold you responsible? Is he a lunatic? This God of ours, is he a lunatic? If a human being did that, we say, the guy is a lunatic. You know, making you responsible for what your great-grandfather did. We say, the guy is a lunatic. Is God a lunatic? He says, no. Then how can he make you responsible? Can you see? Now that's how the Muslim reasons. The Bible tells you clear cut language. The soul that sinneth it shall die. The one that sins is going to perish. And the Christian puts a full stop. I said there is no full stop there. There is a comma. Why don't you complete the sentence, the verse? He says, the soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not be the iniquity of the father. Father Adam sinned, his children are not responsible. Neither shall the father be the iniquity of the son. He says, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Whatever good thing the good man does, he gets his benefit, the reward. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Whatever you, the evil fellow does, he gets punished for it. Salvation, so, but if the wicked will turn, means repent from all the sins that he has committed, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. That is salvation. We Muslims, we say we believe in it, we accept it. You say, no, all your good deeds are like filthy rags. You will go to hell unless you believe in the blood of the Lord Jesus. So, this dialogue carries on, discussion carries on. And overall, if you can see clearly that the Muslim has a point, irrefutable point, logical point, based in his Bible, based in the words of Jesus, then you have to accept it. If you don't, now, your condemnation will be sure. After that, after that. So... I can see the professor is behind me. Uh, I'll let you talk to him afterwards because uh, I, we've got to stop sometime and, and this is, I think, the appropriate time to do it. With all of his energy, he still has to speak tonight. Uh, he has another program and uh, you're going to announce about the program before we stop. And so, would you do that, please, sir? And uh, Ahmad Hidad will be speaking tonight at Stanford University at 7.30 p.m. The topic of his lecture is, is Jesus God. This will be held at Cooper Lee Hall at Stanford University campus this evening tonight at 7.30 p.m. And all of you who may be interested in asking further questions to him or understanding more about the concept of Jesus in Islam and so forth, please uh, take his flyers, which will help you um, find the, uh, the directions to reach the Cooper Lee Hall and, and the other programs and so forth. Right. And, and you his, 
Excuse me, go ahead. Uh, Muffy states are also available and they may be available in the evening for you to browse. Signature tapes. All right, fine. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, we understand that uh, the videotape of uh, the lecture with uh, or the debate with Jimmy Swigert is going to be available and we're going to buy it and um, uh, put it in our video library. Uh, so if you're interested in um, uh, seeing that or uh, such, we're going to put it in our video library here. I think our students would be interested in that and certainly we would. I, um, we appreciate very much your being here. I think that uh, as the chair of the uh, uh, Coordinated Religious Studies Program, I do want to say that um, we are very much concerned about dialogue. Um, we are concerned about understanding one another and that what we think we do here is teach about religion. We're not trying to make anybody religious or teaching people religion. Um, and I think that the only way we can do that is be open to various points of view and at least to try to listen to one another and I hope we've had an opportunity to do a little of that this afternoon. Thank you very, very much for being here, Mr. Dadat.